Now, last time we're thinking about a situation where we got an advanced payment, kind of like an unearned revenue type of situation from a standard accounting textbook, but we're gonna treat it a little bit differently due to the logistics of the software. So remember, if you've got the customer cycle here, then you, you're gonna end up hopefully with money coming into the company at the end of the day. It might happen a few different ways. One, you might just have gig work from like a YouTube or something. You just deposit it when you get it, possibly with the bank feeds. That would be the easiest thing to do, but can only be done in an, an industry like that. You might be at a cash register, in which case you wanna use the sales receipt typically, and then you're gonna make a deposit, or you might have to do the whole accrual thing which is kind of cruel because it takes a little bit more time, but it's not too bad, where you have to do the work first, like in a bookkeeping firm, law firm or something, invoice the client, track the accounts receivable, then receive the payment, and then make the deposit. But also you could have an industry where you get paid first. And we talked about some of those industries, like a newspaper, you get paid first, magazines, now online subscription models for applications, you get paid before you do the work. In that case, from an accrual standpoint, you should put the money on the books uh, as a liability first. It's income or sorry, revenue, not revenue. Cash goes up and the other side is not revenue, but rather a liability, unearned revenue because you owe the cash back or you owe the work that needs to be done. When you do the work, that's when you would record it as revenue. That's the general uh, idea. Now in our example, we're saying we have a situation where we're trying to provide guitars, which is a high priced item. We're not making the sale at the point in time it's requested, but to make sure that the customer's committed, we want that deposit. So once again, we got money before we did the work. We expect to be invoicing in the future, but we got the money before the invoicing. Instead of putting it into a liability account, we made a negative receivable because from a logistic standpoint in the software, it's easier to track everything related to customers in the subledger account that's tied to accounts receivable. If I make a liability account like unearned revenue or a deposit or something down here, then that deposit is not tied to the customer. So I'm not gonna be able to tie the invoice to it as easily. Now we might have a workaround around that that we can talk about later, but from a bookkeeping standpoint, the easiest thing is typically the thing that looks most natural is to make this negative receivable credit the accounts receivable before you have the invoice. And let's see what that looks like on a subledger report. Right clicking, duplicate another tab to look at the AR subledger. And we're gonna go down to, to the reports again. And let's open, I'll close the boogie so I could see stuff. And then I'm gonna go down to the who owes you. And let's look at the customer balance detail report. Let's look at that one, shall we? And so then Mr. Anderson, you could see here, we put a payment on it, even though, and so now we have a negative amount in there. That's a, that's a problem. If I was to create my external financial reports, which we can solve with an adjusting entry, if we needed to at the end of the period, but logistically it works well because I can look there and say, okay, yeah, if, if this person came in and said that uh, they wanted to complete the purchase, I can easily go and say, ah, yeah, you, you owe us, we owe you money basically. So we got to complete that or apply it to the purchase. Uh, if I go to the first tab over here and check that out in the sales area and we go into the customers, for example, and I go down and say, Mr. Anderson wants to complete the process. I could see Mr. Anderson has that negative amount there. So I'm going to go into it. And so now we have the information here. So there's another way we can look at it. We got, we're going to go, if they came into the shop and say, oh yeah, we've got this unapplied uh, $300 deposit. So when you make the actual purchase of the guitar now that we've got for you, then we could apply that $300 out to it. If you're in the business view, by the way, we're currently in the get paid and paid area and customers. We're under the customers tab. Okay.